So good morning and thank you so much for coming out today uh, to a very magical and powerful moment of unveiling a tremendous project, Prophet Isaiah's Second Coming House, which by extension is a reflection of the power of partnerships, the power of art, the power of individuals to express themselves with a vision, the power of teamwork. There's so much to be said here today. Um, I am Sarah Capen. It's been my honor to serve as executive director of the Niagara Falls National Heritage Area uh, for the past 12 years. And if you know our organization, you know that we say yes, we're doers. Um, and this project is a total reflection of this. And we're gonna tell you a little bit more about that story. Uh, that story is also the reflection of community. It's a reflection of a belief in something bigger for Niagara Falls. As an organization, we have worked so hard over the years to uncover the bones of Niagara Falls as a place. And we know those bones are strong. And oftentimes we don't see that on a day-to-day -day basis because of the negative noise that surrounds us. Because there sometimes feels like a deficit of hope that we hear things, whether from the media or others, about a negativity around Niagara Falls. And everything we do is about uncovering the authenticity and extraordinary history of Niagara Falls and the extraordinary people like Isaiah Robertson, who believed in so much bigger, and used it as an inspiration to move us forward, to revitalize and be part of the revitalization of the city and also to find that courage to be the positive voice, the voice of positive change here in Niagara Falls. And there couldn't be a more beautiful expression of this than what we have behind us. So I'm gonna let you absorb this for a moment. If you look at this and look at the cross, you look at each individual hand carved star, this was a vision that was inspired because Isaiah saw Niagara Falls, he saw the power of it, and this was his expression from that. And if we carry that with us every single day, we can be part of this positive movement to move the city forward. Isaiah Robertson did just that. When he felt the power of Niagara Falls and was moved to create that wonder, he said yes. He became a doer, not a viewer. He became a voice of positive change, not a voice of negativity. And he kept going until he died in 2020. And his gift was passed on to the Kohler Foundation, Miss Gloria, who is a big part of this effort and a champion for Niagara Falls, and then gifted to us as those stewards going forward. So on behalf of our team at the National Heritage Area, my job is to express that gratitude for all those that have been involved in this tremendous project. And first and foremost, that is the Kohler Foundation who joined us from Wisconsin, who were introduced to this project by Fred Scruton, who was the photographer, and they found us. They found us here and said that this is so important. We're gonna invest our time and money in preserving it and creating that next chapter of stewardship. And when they reached out to me that day and sent me that email, I think my first word was, yes, we're in. If you're in, we're in. So I can't thank you enough, Beth, Liesel, the whole Kohler Foundation team, um, for believing in Niagara Falls. Um, too often, we have a history of tragedy in Niagara Falls where things are taken from us, right? And we don't recover those things. So whether it's our archives with local history, whether it's our buildings, whether it's departure of people because of the economic changes, so much has been taken from us. And you put your foot down and said, we're not gonna let this be taken from Niagara Falls. That's how special it is. Um, and so it was easy to say yes. We know a lot of people said no before us, but we said yes because you believed in it, and I'm so grateful for that. Braden from BR Howard, I don't know what to say. If you saw Braden out here and his team from BR Howard who deconstructed all of this after taking pictures, drone footage, took it back to their studio in Pennsylvania, wondered how each one of these stars could be carved differently 
And then instead of doing it symmetrically like a star, it did it in the exact spirit in life of Isaiah to make sure that what is assembled here today was exactly how Prophet Isaiah wanted it to be. And hundreds and hundreds of hours went into that, into painting the rocks, into, re, into restructuring them all so they were exactly in the place as when they were taken to be restored. That is an incredible work. So Brayden, thank you so much for being an incredible partner and doing it in the heat of the summer last year in 2022. Miss Gloria, uh, who is a beacon, a positive force of activism. When I talked to Miss Gloria yesterday, um, she said, Sarah, um, I can feel his presence and I know that our whole team has been feeling his presence from the very beginning of the project until yesterday. When you walk in, you feel Isaiah's presence. But Miss Gloria said, I'm getting a little bit tired. I need some more help with all the organizations and all of the activities that she's running. And she goes, I want to build the partnership with our great team at the Heritage Center, all the work that we do, and let's share the burden together. Um, and so Miss Gloria was a big part of this because she said yes to saying this is how this is going to be preserved. To my National Heritage Area board members and Underground Railroad Heritage Center board members, I believe Lynn is here. Where is Lynn? Oh, there she is. Um, thank you for saying yes as well. Um, I think our board doesn't know what we bring to them and they're like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're going to go with it. So thank you so much. Incredible partners. Um, Larry Rubin, who is also here today, he is our attorney and he said, listen, I have to come see this project and then I'm going to be able to provide the best legal advice possible. Um, thank you so much, Larry, for believing in us as always. Alicia and her contractors who did so much work here, brand new roof. Every time we uncovered a layer of this project, it revealed more things that needed to be done. So the capital improvements for the project were all done by Alicia and team. City of Niagara Falls, we had to go through so many different codes. <laughs> <laughs> code requests. Grateful for all the support that you provided us, Mayor. The neighbors that are here today who have watched this and been inspired, um, who've given a hand, who've come out to say a friendly word, to share a little bit about Isaiah. This is our future together. We're in this together. And then our incredible team um, that's here today who nurtured each and every piece of this project with love, diving deep into what Prophet Isaiah really really wanted and when you go inside and you see the bead cal bead gallery we call it the bead shop bead lab um, you are going to be amazed that was the work of danny and preston and deirdre and anybody that lended those hands to recreate hundreds probably close to a thousand different beads in the exact way that prophet isaiah left them for us so with that intention we each made it our own, so thank you, Ali, Deirdre, Saladin, Matt, Hope, Tyshawn, Shar, Navaya, Josiah, Jaden, Sophie, Promise, Danny, Preston, Baca, Kimora, Tyler, and Aaron for always saying yes and standing up and showing up and saying, we'll do whatever it takes to be part of this positive force. Revealing and restoring the soul of a place, especially in Niagara Falls, that has incomprehensible beauty along tra alongside tragedy is challenging. With each of you and everybody that stood up and showed up today, we have been able to hold tight to Prophet Isaiah's lasting testament and are going to be the steward going forward. So on that note, I have the tremendous honor of introducing Beth and Liza, who are gonna speak from the Kohler Foundation and share a little bit about that story. Hi everyone, um, my name is Lisa Tustweed and this is Beth Wiesa and we are here today representing Kohler Foundation and it's great to be back in Niagara Falls. I think this might be our eighth trip here. Um, and maybe, <laughs> yeah, it's great. We're so happy to be back. So the Kohler Foundation is located in Kohler, Wisconsin and the Kohler Foundation makes grants, gives scholarships, hosts a performing arts series. And then for over 30 years, we've been preserving art environments created by self-taught artists across the country. And today we first want to thank 
uh, Gloria Dolson Robertson for trusting Kohler Foundation to preserve her husband, Isaiah Robertson's work and legacy. We had really some wonderful talks. Um, and I know Miss Gloria had just lost her mother and we sat together in the living room. It was also COVID. It was such a crazy time. And, um, and we are so grateful for her trust and letting us um, preserve her. Oh, there she is. Hi, I didn't see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also want to take uh, a moment to thank uh, photographer Fred Scruton. There are photographers who, that's what they do. They go across the country and they photograph art environments, amazing things you just could never even believe were created. And Fred, um, that is what he does besides being an art professor. And he w became good friends with uh, um, Prophet Isaiah and visited many times. And we were so lucky that that friendship occurred and and Fred's um, wife as well uh, because then he took so many photographs and and documented the site and they were crucial for Braden and his team to recreate um, because I know he changed he changed color schemes and things like this and so it was great to have his crucial photographs so and then before before we take on any project ever we always need to find a long-term steward that's usually the toughest part of our job um, you know we We'll get it in great shape, and now here, here to this um, organization, please take this on. It doesn't come with an endowment, unfortunately. Um, so when I emailed, um, and we had, we, yeah, we had started and stopped with a few other organizations. And when I emailed Sarah Capen one night, because we were just doing research, trying to find an organization, and we're like, oh boy, I think this is the one, Niagara Falls National Heritage Area. It was late in the day, I was packing up, and um, I was like, oh, I'll send this off. I'm not gonna get a response, whatever. Literally two minutes, I wasn't even to the door, and I could hear my email, and the response was, yes, we are in, absolutely, we'll figure out the details. <laughs> and it was the beginning of an amazing partnership. And uh, so when you talked about saying yes, that is how we think of Niagara Falls National Heritage Area. Yes, we're in. Um, so I'm going to let um, Beth continue on here. We like to tag team everything. Collaboration. Hi, everyone. This site was a unique project for Kohler Foundation. Most of the previous projects we conserved were in rural areas. I was stationed in Kansas for about two years. Um, and Niagara Falls winters made this project extremely challenging. This artwork was severely deteriorated. So we were so excited to discover B.R. Howard and Associates, located in Carl, Pennsylvania, the ultimate professionals who were up to the task to find creative solutions for preserving the site while maintaining the artist's hand, as you've heard. Braden and his team worked tirelessly for over two years to document and conserve the site. We believe that our preservation builds community, spurs economic development, and preserves our cultural history. We have no doubt that Prophet Isaiah's second coming house under the guidance of Niagara Falls National Heritage Area will do all three. Thank you. Again, so grateful to that you chose Niagara Falls amongst the portfolio of your projects. It's such an honor to be affiliated with the Kohler Foundation. So next up is Braden with the BR Howard. Uh, um, again, we've spoken so much, but Braden, please. Thank you. Yeah. It is a uh, great honor to be here. Um, when we first came to the site, we were a bit surprised. We are used to working on public art environments. That's what we do. We do historic preservation. We work on um, architecture and sculpture and public artwork. But we had never seen, obviously, anything quite like this. So it was a unique challenge. But we had uh, fantastic uh, photographs from Fred Scruton and it really helped our team to um, kind of pour through everything. And my favorite part of the project was just spreading all of his photos across the floor and having them up on screens and taping them on walls and looking at the parts and pieces and really trying to figure out how we were gonna do this and how we can document them and how we can you know, project the images on to the new, um, the new PVC pieces that we were, some of it had to be fabricated out of for you know, longevity. And we wanted to make sure we accurately traced your husband's um, artwork so it was still in his hand and told his story and it was his vision um, so we didn't want it to look like our you know close facsimile we really wanted to try to keep in honor of uh, prophet Isaiah Robertson so we had an absolute blast doing it we were honored to be a part of it 
we had so much fun having people in the community walk up as we work and ask questions and see the excitement as things started to go back together. So it was an absolute joy to be a part of this project. Thank you, Brayden. Again, not enough words can be said about the tremendous work your team did. Okay, so it's my pleasure to introduce Ali Spunger Degan, who is our Director of Public Art, who's going to speak for a couple minutes as well. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it was so great to see everybody coming up, and now I see some more faces now that I'm facing out this way. So welcome, thank you. I'm so excited for you all to come on a tour uh, and refreshments uh, into the backyard space, into the interior of the house, and see more of the story and learn more about this process, the history of Prophet Isaiah, how we came to be here on this day. Um, what I kind of want to start to talk about today, um, when we think about art, um, and we're standing in front of quite a bit of it, um, I want us to think about Niagara Falls, because Niagara Falls is art, and art is storytelling, and all of us have a story to tell, and we can tell that through many different mediums. And so what we do through the Niagara Falls National Heritage Area with partners, with neighbors, with colleagues, with friends, is we bring those stories into visibility, into more of the public sphere. Um, we've done that through our murals, which is kind of, uh, in a way, a start to this project. Um, I remember uh, Kohler Foundation reaching out and sharing with us that they first discovered our murals on Main and Depot that we started in 2019 as kind of the entry point into our organization. So yes, there's the visibility for our organization, but most importantly, above all, it's for the uh, residents of our community here in Niagara Falls, and it's their stories, and they're telling their stories. Um, one thing I want to reference um, here as um, Prophet Isaiah really laid the foundation in Niagara Falls for art creation. Uh, he built this um, because he felt that he needed to. It came from his soul, um, from his spirit, and he brought this here for us. Um, and and going through that process that we saw over the years. He shared those stories with visitors who came by here, with residents, and we hope to continue that legacy as best we can um, and move that forward. And so the storytelling that we've seen uh, from, our, from our, our community, Prophet Isaiah started that and we've really been able to follow, follow his lead um, and be able to see that in other spaces. So we can look at public art in a busy space, such as maybe on a street, such as Main Street, um, but we can also look at public art right here um, at our homes and our, in our front yards, um, also in our living rooms or in our studios and in our classrooms. A lot of the other work we do as well, we work with Niagara Falls High School. Uh, we work with a lot of youth and students, um, and we hope to continue to do that here at Prophet Isaiah House. There's a lot of um, uh, activities, programs, initiatives coming in the future. Today we're opening to the public for the first time. Tomorrow we'll be here all day and uh, here for an evening reception, so please come back. Uh, bring friends, family, others who you also want to share uh, Prophet Isaiah's magnificent, magnificent art with um, throughout the day tomorrow. Um, and following, we'll start to be um, sharing some of the news of what we'll be working on from there. We'll share a little bit this on, uh, of this on our tour uh, behind the scenes uh, when we're finished here, um, but we're looking at artists uh, in residence programs and community gardens for youth uh, uh, and the programs at Niagara Falls High School. These are some of the conversations with local partners that we're starting to have um, to be able to bring that here. Um, and also, you know, we want to know what the community wants to see here in this space. What does this mean for, for everyone here? Um, how do they want to use it? How do we want to access the backyard, uh, the interior of the space in small ways, but that can make big impact. So again, I really want to just share, I think, the inspiration that we're hearing from everybody speaking today that you're going to hear from our team as you talk to everybody today, stories that you're going to share also with us, I hope, um, about uh, your memories, stories of Prophet Isaiah. We can't wait to hear more about um, him and his legacy from others as well. Um, and, and bring those you know, to everybody around you. This is a space um, of inspiration. That's how Prophet Isaiah envisioned it. It's how he created it. And we're going to continue the art movement here in Niagara Falls because because Niagara Falls is a place of art. And so I'm glad, I'm very happy to welcome you here alongside my friends and colleagues and with all of you today. And uh, now I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you, everybody.
So before I introduce um, Saladine, I would like Miss Gloria to stand so we can give her a round of applause for her tremendous stewardship and activism in the community. My friend, my dear friend Saladine, our Director of Community Engagement, who has and always does pour every ounce of his fiber into all of our projects every time. Um, I think that all of the positive words that we're sharing is also holding off the rain. So we're just gonna keep it going, yes. right? Yes. Saladine. Yes. All right, Saladine. Right. Check one, two. All right, yo, so. I was thinking about this, right? And I think like the power of the work we do is a lot of times, hmm, we have a team that don't believe in a phrase, it's not my job, right? Um, and I think, especially in this city, a lot of times things don't get done because some people have that mentality, like it's not my job, right? And that kind of reinforces the apathetic attitude that a lot of t times people have. Um, I would say like one of the greatest things about this project that I enjoy is being on site, helping Alicia Dean, where's Alicia over here? She's our lead contractor, right? Um, <clears throat> And um, bringing community members on to help with this project, like everyday people, right? So when we started this project, uh, the house right across the street was vacant. They have a new porch. Someone's living there now, right? Two doors down, they resided their entire home. Next door, they rebuilt their porch. They put in new windows. And our neighbor right here, first time that she has a garden in the front yard. Right? And I have a green thumb, so I was helping assist with the garden over there. One day I came here to the, to the site and we're doing the work on the roof and the neighbor in the back came over and said, uh, uh, there's a, a raccoon in my garbage. Can you get it out for me? <laughs> right? So I said, yeah, I'll get the raccoon out. So it's like when you're doing work like this, you become a magnet for activity and people realize that as a doer that they could depend on you and rely on you to do this type of work and if you have a mentality like it's not my job you won't continue in the continuity of making sure that you have this work and this activity that's going on we literally literally saw this community right here transform from the work we're doing and a lot of times people talk about that public art changes communities and it's, it's kind of like a they don't see it right we literally saw that and this is a testament to the importance of that type of work if there were parts of this journey where we didn't have expertise in certain areas we went and got the experts to do it and not only did we get the experts to do it we helped them and they showed us how to do it ourselves right and I think that's an important process in doing any of the projects that we do here. These type of collaborations, well, we can't have that attitude or mentality that it is not my job. So I just wanted to share that. We have a lot more to share about this, this process that we've been, been doing. We went through a couple of phases. We still have a couple of more phases of you know, work that we're going to be doing. But um, I'm just thankful for all of you to be here to share this moment with us and then You've never seen the inside before, so I'm excited for all of you to get an opportunity to see the inside as well. So, thank you. So I think that all of our speakers couldn't say it any better. Um, we're a, a legion of doers that have held off the rain, but have also transformed a community through our work and projects like these um, that are done in partnership with love 
and inspiration. And if we can continue to build on this, boy, watch out Niagara Falls, right? <laughs> One block at a time, right? So at this time, um, I will tell you what's going to happen. We're going to do a quick ribbon cutting, and then we're going to open up the gate so everybody can see the transformation of the backyard. And you could take a tour on the inside. So grateful for all those that stood up and showed up despite the dire forecast. Always grateful for my mama in the back row, who is my biggest champion, um, who is always there for me. And everybody should be grateful for those that show up and stand up in their lives. So I am going to invite Mayor Steino, County Legislator Elder, Kohler Foundation, Braden, Miss Gloria to the ribbon. It's an awkward place, but it's the only place that we could figure out how to do this. And we'll do a quick ribbon cutting, and then we'll invite everyone into to see it for yourselves. OK, thank you. Alicia, you coming? Come on up. Okay, who's going to get the scissors? Wow, what's up? How about the word? Yeah. All right. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Good to see you again. Hey. Thank <laughs> you.